Hello, welcome back to the next episode of this Sprinter van conversion. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at insulation. I'm going to break this video down into two parts. The first part, we're going to be looking at the thermal properties of the different types of insulation. We're going to be looking at how they're classified. And then we're going to go on to do some actual calculations. And I'm going to work out a heat loss calculation for my van once it's insulated. In the second part of this video, we're going to actually be looking at the installation. We're going to be in the van, putting all of these materials into the van. But first of all, I want to talk about why I've chose these and the reasons for that. Just to give you a bit of background information for those of you that don't know, I'm a mechanical services design engineer. That's my day job. And I deal with heat loss calculations and the design of ventilation and air conditioning systems for commercial buildings. So I deal with this kind of product on a day-to-day -day basis. All materials, whatever they might be, not just insulation, have the ability to conduct heat through them. And this is called thermal conductivity. It's given the Greek symbol lambda, and it's measured in watts per meter K. And what that means is the measurement is the amount of watts that will pass through a meter thick piece of material if there's a one degree temperature difference from one side to the other. We can use this figure of thermal conductivity to give us an idea of how good an insulator it is, because the lower this figure is, the less amount of watts are able to pass through it. So if we look in particular at this mineral wool insulation, this has got a thermal conductivity value of 0 0.037. If we look at this Kingspan thermoboard, this has got a thermal conductivity value of 0 0.022. So this is nearly half the value of this. So this is a much better insulator than this mineral wool. Then if we have a look at something like glass, for instance, that typically has a thermal conductivity value of one. So for a meter wide piece of glass, one watt would pass through if there was one degree temperature difference either side. And then if we go to the far end of the scale, where you get some of your metals like aluminium and silver, aluminium has a thermal conductivity of 205. So it's a really good conductor of heat. And that's why it's used in heat sinks on electrical processors, because it can transmit heat really efficiently. So what we want to do is look for an insulation that has a very low thermal conductivity. You may also find that insulation is classified by an R value. This is a level of resistance. The difference between thermal conductivity and the R value is just that it takes the thickness of the material into the equation. So to get to an R value, what we do is we take the thickness in meters and divide it by the thermal conductivity, the lambda figure, and that will give you a value of R. So if we take an example, this mineral wool insulation, this is 100 mil thick. So the distance in meters is 0.1, and then its thermal conductivity is 0 0.037. So to work out the R value, we take 0.1 divided by 0 0.037, that gives us an R value of 2.7. So on the packaging here, you'll see we've got thermal conductivity of 0 0.037 and an R value of 2.7. So that resistance value is relative to the thickness. And when we come to do heat loss calculations, we use that resistance value to calculate the amount of heat that is lost through the thickness of the wall. So let's work out the R value of this 50 mil Celotex board, and then we can compare with the two. The thermal conductivity of this is 0 0.022, and this is 50 mil thick. So in meters, that's 0 0.05. So we put 0 0.05 on the top of the equation, 0 0.022 on the bottom of the equation, divide one by the other, and we get an R value of 2.3. So we had an R value of 2.7 for the mineral wool, and we've got an R value of 2.3, very similar. So although this is half the thickness of this product, it's nearly as much thermal resistance. 
So that tells me that this is by far the better insulator. So therefore, because this has got by far the better thermal properties, wherever possible in my van, the side panels, the floor and the roof, I'm going to be using this Celotex insulation because this is going to give me much better thermal properties. And then in the awkward parts where the van has got some really intricate nooks and crannies, I'm going to put this mineral wool insulation in only because it's just much easier to pack into those tight little spaces. The only thing I can't expect is this to perform as well if I squash it down to 50 mil. This material relies on the fact that it's very airy, there's tiny little air pockets in here, and it's that thick. If I squash it, I'm getting rid of all those little air pockets and it's not going to perform as well. Obviously the one drawback with the Celotex is this is a fairly rigid slab and you know as well as I do the walls of your van are not straight or most of them are curved so this is going to be much more difficult to install. It's okay for the floor, perfect for that. We can probably get a small bit of a curve on it for the roof, no problem, and some of the side panels we'd be able to use this. But certainly the panels at high level and some of the panels at low level we probably will have to use the mineral wall. Last of all, I want to talk about this stuff. I think there's a few trade names out there like Reflectix, but basically it's a foil-faced bubble wrap. Two sheets of foil sandwiched either side of some bubble wrap. Now, I couldn't find anywhere on the internet a value of thermal conductivity for this material, basically because its thermal conductivity properties are really rubbish. This is not designed as an insulator. This is designed as a reflector and it's also designed as a vapor barrier. So you're only going to want to use this stuff where you can reflect radiant heat, either in a loft space where there's a nice big air gap, or I've even known people put this behind a radiator to reflect the radiant heat back into the room so it's not absorbed by the structure behind. So this doesn't give you very good thermal properties. In fact, when I think about it, aluminium is one of the best conductors. So this aluminium foil is going to conduct heat really easily. So I am going to be using this Reflectix, but I'm not going to be using it as an insulator. I'm purely going to be using this as a vapour barrier. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be insulating the van with mineral wool and with Celotex. And then once I've insulated the van, I'm going to be wrapping the whole of the inside with this foil face material, but purely as a vapour barrier to stop the warm, moist air from inside of the van getting through the insulation and condensating on the cold steel. One of the problems when you're living in a van is us as humans breathe out warm, moist air. We're cooking in the van with propane, which usually gives off uh, moisture either in the cooking process or a byproduct of the combustion of the gas. So there's a lot of things that are producing water in the van. And then if you're in a cold environment, the outside shell of your van is going to be really cold. Steel, for instance, is a fantastic conductor of heat. It's got a thermal conductivity value of 43. So the cold from outside will be conducted through the very thin steel skin of your van very quickly. The internal surface of the van will be extremely cold and then condensation will form on that inner skin. So what we want to do is try and prevent that as much as possible. So we insulate the van with mineral wool or Celotex and then on the inside we wrap it with foil. And what the foil does is that prevents that moisture getting through to where it can condense on the cold steel of the van. There's a couple of ways you can help to reduce the moisture in your van. One of them is to provide some adequate ventilation. That will help to reduce the relative humidity in the van. Another way is to keep the van warm inside because warm air can carry a lot more water content. So a quick look at a psychometric chart which shows us the property of air. We have a look at a colder temperature on the x-axis here and we don't have to go very high in terms of moisture content before that's fully saturated or 100% relative humidity. Whereas we, if we look at a warmer temperature here, 
we can see that it can hold a lot more moisture before that reaches that 100% fully saturated or 100% relative humidity. So it's better to have warm air inside your van. If you have cold air inside the van, that moisture cannot be held in the air and it will come out as condensation on any of your cold surfaces. The warmer you can keep it in there, the less you will see condensation on your windows and the inside of your van. We've seen how we can use the thermal conductivity and the thickness of the material to calculate the resistance value. Now in order to calculate the heat loss for our van, we need to sum all of the resistances of all the different materials. So I've just gone online and I'm using this U-value calculator to work out what the U-value is for the complete structure. This calculation sheet already puts in values for the resistance for the inside surface layer and also the external surface layer. And then all we need to do is add the rest of the components. So on the inside of my van, I'm going to have some plywood sheeting. So I'll select plywood. It's already put in the thermal conductivity. I just need to put the thickness, nine millimeters. Enter, it calculates the resistance and then I add it to the structure. Then we're going to have the aluminium foil. And you'll see, as soon as I select aluminium, the thermal conductivity it's saying is 160. I know it's probably a little bit more than that. The thickness, half a millimeter and you'll see its resistance value is nothing so we'll add it anyway but it won't have any effect on our calculation we can enter our own material earth wool type in the thermal conductivity we know the previous 0.37 Thickness was 100 mil, and there it's calculated the resistance 2.7, what we had before. Add that to our structure. The outside of the van is just steel. I'm just going to put a thickness in of 1 millimeter. And again, because of the thermal conductivity is 50, its resistance is zero. So that's not really going to make any difference to the structure of our van. We'll just scroll down and there we see there's the sum of all the resistances, 2.9. And then in order to calculate the U value, it's simply 1 divided by the sum of all the resistances. So our U value for this particular structure is 0.339 watts per meter squared K. So that's 0.339 watts per meter squared of area of the van per degree C temperature difference from inside to out. And we use this figure to calculate the heat loss. Right, here we are with my heat loss sheet that I've developed using Excel. I'm going to run through this quite quickly. These are the elements of the rear portion of the camper van. These are the dimensions, the length and width and the height. And then these are the areas. So for the external walls, this is the length of both walls, the height of both walls, and this is the area in square meters. These are the U values that we calculated earlier for each of the component parts of the van. And this is the inside temperature that I want to achieve. With an outside temperature of minus two, the temperature difference, or delta T, is 23 degrees. So to work out the total heat loss, I need to take the area or volume, multiplied by the U value, multiplied by the temperature difference. And that gives me a figure in watts. And this is the total heat loss in watts for the rear portion of the van. Now I know this is fairly high level, some of you will point out that there's some thermal bridging in some areas, but it's a very good estimate. And this gives you the principle of how to do your heat loss calculation. You also need to do a heat loss calculation for the cab and add this to this figure. 
obviously there's a lot more glass in the cab so I'm expecting that figure to be higher than the rear portion of the van. Thank you for sticking with me through those calculations. I know sometimes these formulas and maths can seem a little bit daunting, but I wanted to somehow demonstrate the properties of this insulation and the reasons why we use it and the benefits of using these different insulations and their thicknesses. It's not just that I've seen somebody else do it on another YouTube video and I'm just gonna copy what they're doing. There's a method behind why I've selected these materials and there's also a method to how I've put them in my van. And I just wanted to use the calculations to demonstrate that. So thanks very much for following me on this video. I hope that hasn't been too in depth for you. And the next video, we're actually just gonna be doing the physical work and putting this stuff inside of the van. And I hope you can join me on that one. Please give me a thumbs up if you've liked this series. Also leave me a comment below because I really enjoy reading your comments. And if you think this would be useful to somebody else, please do share the video on social media. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.